Right everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hamish, Jackie and Ewan chatting after another relatively disappointing weekend for uh, Celtic. Jackie, um, decent weekend-ish for you in terms of what, what you were doing. A bit of golf watching, uh, a bit of Celtic watching as well. Yeah, it was good. Good, uh, good bit of viewing. Standard of the golf was good, but um, unfortunately the, the Celtic game wasn't as <laughs> enjoyable. Um, st- started the game quite well, I thought. You know, got the goal and to lose a goal so quickly. At, you know, after scoring, you know they're kind of still celebrating. And a couple of minutes later, yeah. it's it's in the back of net, which was preventable. You know, and after that minute there, he just felt that it was going to be another one of their games, and it it, it proved that. You know, they're hitting the bar and you not know, taking their chances, and and I think just not having the right sort of selections, you know, to pick from. You know, I think that was quite evident. Uh, you look at the bench. You know, there's a one or two are missing for the team. You know, it's a real concern. Yeah, I mean, attacking options on the bench over the last three or four games have been non-existent. Um, to the extent where we had Owen Moffat. In, in the squad, I know he was sent to warm up a couple of times on, on Saturday, but and by all by all accounts, he seems like a decent talent. But when that's the kind of player you've got possibly coming off the bench, then you know you're in a sticky situation. Um, Jackie, how much of this is down to the lack of options, and how much should we be you know more concerned about what we're watching? I think the, the, the best obviously just now is the injuries have been pretty pretty uh, severe. You know, been a lot of injuries to deal with, as well as putting a new team together and trying to find out, you know, what his best 11 is, what his best 14, 15, 16 players. And I think that's that's shown over the last little bit there that he needs he needs more help in that. And I, I did say the other week there, I did think it would take, you know, the next window for him to address certain bits there, players that he, now that he's in the door, you can see the characters, you can see what ones he thinks will take the club forward and what positions that he needs to uh, improve on, you know, and if there's players missing, what positions do we need to strengthen uh, so we're not, you know, scratching ahead and go, we'll just, we'll, we just need to wait until the players are back, which seems to be the case just now, you know, that I think Thursday's games are concerned if McGregor's not fit and Kyogo's mm-hmm. not fit, you know, the spine of your team is a real concern. The, the bits there, obviously, they've got a new defence uh, as well through the middle, which is still a concern. They could have could have lost the game that weekend, even not we had enough chances. You know, that it could have been a penalty and possibly a red card um, against um, against the centre back. So, yeah, I mean, it's you'd be finding out more about his squad just now than, than he will when the, the other games, that, you know, like the Dundee and Man when you're thrashing teams, he'll find out more about his team and the people around him. Uh, but obviously, it's not it's not great for the moment, uh, you know, for the, the results that we need. You and Jackie's a little bit concerned about Thursday night. I'm certainly concerned as well. Um, but what's a realistic expectation for a Celtic fan to have going into a game against, you know, the second best team in Germany? Oh, that's a that's a pretty loaded question. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think I, I, as long as we give them a, a decent, you know, as long as as long as uh, Celtic put on a, de- a decent display and at least try and go toe to toe with them, um, I think any season by Le- this by our Leverkusen would be uh, a pretty tough tough ask. Um, that's just a squad just absolutely littered with quality. You've got fantastic international players in there, so it would be a tough test regardless of the team that we had. But ugh, talking about expectations, I have no idea. Um, I'd, I'd I'd be delighted if we got a draw out of it. I'll put, I'll put it that way. I, I think I feel the same. I, I think the, the the result is obviously the most important thing, but I, I think the performance is important as well. And I think the intent that Celtic play with, you know, we have to take the game to them, even though you know we've got a a, a squad that's lost so many key players. I think the way Ange plays and the, the you know the the aura that Ange has of the way he likes to play football, we've got to see that on Thursday. I don't know how you feel, Jackie, but. I, you know, when, when Ange came in, we were promised this real high intensity play and we saw it in the original week. Remember that run of five home games? I've not seen it in the last three or four games. It might be down to injuries, but we've got to see it quickly. Otherwise, you know, the support are going to turn on the team. They turned it full time on Sunday because there was a lot of booze at Celtic Park and it's only going to get louder if the team don't start playing the football we know they can. 
Yeah, and I think you know you're looking at the game as well. There's a lot of empty seats starting to you know show around the stadium, um, which you know there was a there was a good well earlier on when you know the Dundee game, St Mon game, and some other bits they were exciting. And I, I do I do believe it's very difficult to sustain that. You know you're playing three games in a week. You know in, in the European game Saturday, then going on again to that level intensity and whether that's a reason with the different injuries and muscular injuries, but they seem to be having a lot of them. Is it down to the intensity? Because in between the games just now, they won't be training much. They'll be ticking over, maybe walking through things and set pieces, walking through shape or, you know, um, shaping in and out of possession. But they won't be doing any, I'd imagine, real uh, training inten- intensity training sessions because mm. they'll just be recovering. You know, they'll go over the game the weekend, recovering for this game. And again, it'll be the same after. It'll be Friday and for a listener to see who's who's okay for the weekend for the Aberdeen game and, and just maintaining the players. So it's very difficult for them to, to put things across at this stage. Have you got any theories for why we're picking up so many injuries? You know, there seems to be a lot of muscular injuries, hamstrings, um, other muscles. I can't think of any other muscles in the body. but well, I think the uh, big striker was his calf in the warm-up last week when they thought he was going yeah. on. Uh, I don't honestly don't know. I mean, it's something that's not not something new to the club. You know, you've seen it over the last few few years. A lot of different injuries, muscular. New players that are joining. Bio when he first came in, injury after injury. Sped likewise. You know, they don't. Maybe it's just the the change in the in the setup, the intensity of the games, intensity of training uh, to get up to speed of that. Um, but hopefully, as you say, they can they can get through that. And I think that's why it's important, you know, if you're playing this way and have that intensity and chasing the ball and getting the ball back, you know, the recovery has to be has to be spot on. Otherwise, you will pick up injuries. You know, you're, you're playing, as I said, two and three games in a week. You're playing Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday. You know, you soon it soon takes its toll on on the on the body. You and I, I guess we're hoping that with Anton McElhone coming into the club that, that this stuff is going to improve. But I don't know much about um, you know rehabilitation and, and recovery from injuries, but I, I assume that it takes a little bit of time for his methods to, to be seen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's it's important to get... It's not just about McElhone, obviously. As far as I know, you know, big clubs the size of ours should have at least... You know, one or two fitness specialists, fitness coaches that are coming in and, and making a difference, um, and and that's been the case for a long time. And it seems that just kind of felt like we're a wee bit unprepared for the this is that kind of thing happening. Um, and it's yeah, when you when you bring in a manager who wants to play as quickly, who wants to press as, as much as as Ange Postecoglou does, it seems you know it'd be fairly obvious that that's going to have an impact on fitness. But you should be prepared for that. Um, and you see in the games recently the, the the drop off in fitness. You know the levels of pressing against uh, against the United, especially. You know just weren't getting to the to the ball carrier uh, quickly enough. Dundee United had a lot of space a lot of the time. Um, it seemed I very they fit, fitter than us in the last fifteen minutes. And see it full time. It was our players who were keeled over. Yeah, this is it. this is exactly it. So it, it's a case of you know are the players fit enough to do what Ange Postecoglou wants them to do? How important is McElhone going to be in that? And is the infrastructure right to actually play the style of football? Because you need to invest in it. It's not just about first team talents. It's about having a structure around them for for those players to succeed. Um, especially with the schedule being it is. So um, yeah, it'll be interesting to keep an eye on that. But you can definitely tell. You can definitely tell the matches both on and off the ball that um, quite a lot of players are, are struggling with this at the moment. Yeah, you mentioned that schedule there. You know, we play Thursday night, we play Sunday. I think most Celtic fans would agree that Sunday's the far bigger game, the, the far more important game in our season. Do we risk jeopardising Sunday's result on Thursday night, Jack? If we go hell for leather against a good side, could we end up, you know, being in a, an even worse state going into the more important game in the week on Sunday? I think that's, you know, watching all the stuff so far since he's came in, I don't think he, he does anything else. I don't think he can play another way. Um, yeah. where, where that's a worry or where it's not, you know, because if everybody's fit and he has extra players there, you know, you see player, teams down the road where they have, you look at Man City, you know, they do it. They'll change the whole team for the following game. They can do that because they put so much into a match. Um, and you can do that if you've got the squad. But I don't, I don't, you know, for what I've seen from Ange, I don't, 
I've not seen him change anything really, you know, in terms of his shape or his style. You know, when we go two 0 up away in Betis, like can we go and keep it tight for the rest of the half? You know, we we, we go and we nearly get a third goal, but then suddenly we, you know, I've not I've not seen uh, a kind of plan B if you like. Even at the weekend there, you know, it's it's the same thing. We just it's like right, I believe in what I'm doing, and I'll just keep doing it and. Until it comes comes good, um, and that seems to be what we've seen from him so far. That's my big concern that I, that I just you know outlaid there the fact that we we go on Thursday night and I think you're right, Jackie. I think he, he'll go to win that game. He'll go to play football. He'll go with his strongest team. I don't think for a minute that Ange is going to hold back Rogic or hold back Turnbull for Sunday. And I just think it's a lot to ask these players to go to the well time and time again. We've got the same players starting every single game at the moment. No rest, um, no competition really behind them, which is a crucial thing as well. And I just think when, when Celtic are at their best, it's when we have competition in key areas. You know, players aren't assured game time. And I get that part of that is enforced on us at the moment because we've got so many injuries. But it's just really concerning when you know players who are underperforming, like David Turnbull, um, like McCarthy, uh, like Ayeti, um, like Starfelt, all four of those, let's face it, are probably going to start on Thursday night and barring any injury returns on Sunday, probably be the same again. That's not a great place to be and it's it's what gets me a bit concerned. Um, you and the, the, the team is stale at the moment. I don't think anyone would really argue with that. Um, mm-hmm. How does Ange try and inject something into them? We know key players are coming back Kyogo McGregor, uh, Yakimakis, Forrest, etc. after the international break. Um, but how do we get something new from the current group of players that are at his disposal on Thursday night and even more so on Sunday? Uh, oh, it's tricky with Thursday night. I would have said, you know, if, if this was a preview to Rafe Rovers or something, I would have said it's about, uh, you know, getting some of the B team talents, some of the younger talents in. Um, because I think if I was an international footballer, um, I'd be terrified if, if, if like a 17, 18 year old was starting ahead of me. So I think that would be quite good impetus. But, um, you know, Postcoglu definitely has options in terms of youth players he can bring in. Um, but in terms of kind of freshening this up, it's, it's, he's been dealt a really, really difficult hand. Um, and I think that kind of needs to be remembered when we, t- we, we talk about him in, in general. You know, he's been dealt a very difficult hand here. Um, it would have been great to get a couple more midfield options in. Um, we still have players like Liam Shaw uh, to come in. You know, there's still kind of younger guys around the squad. Uh, Scales hasn't really made much of an impact yet. It just confuses me as to why we played such a, a strong team against Ray Froder. Other... It just confuses me as to why we played such a strong team against Rafe Rovers when we had uh, a potentially difficult game coming up, and it did prove to be difficult. Um, so yeah, I guess more squad options in there. Um, I think you do have a lot of quality there, kind of be on the bench, and, and it's just about kind of utilizing them when the time's right. What about specifics then? Does a Yeti start against Leverkusen? I know there's not really another option, Ewan, but can we afford to keep starting a striker, keep playing a striker who is just really, really short of confidence? For me, I would actually have one of Abada or Jota starting up front. I know Abada, we talked about this a wee bit on Sunday, but you know Abada played plenty of games as a striker last season. Uh, he's just got that directness. He can make the runs that he, he can't. Um, I think it's, it's definitely worth a go because the way Ange plays is, you know, we're talking about there's no real plan B. I, I don't see that the system that he wants to use getting the best out of AA. I just, I just can't. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's worth looking at alternatives or seeing if we can, you know, if I don't know how fashionable it is nowadays, but using like a false nine or something like that, you know, having someone up there who can isn't necessarily looking, looking to score a bit more sort of facilitate because the wingers we have are excellent and they will score goals. So um, it's a very it's a decent defensive outfit, barely recruiting, but they do have a couple of new guys in there. So. Um, you know, we could we could score goals. We could score goals. It's, as you say, it's just about defending at the other end. But in terms of a Yeti, I'm not convinced, man. I'm really not. I don't think anyone is. And that's part of my point is that Celtic Park on Thursday night, the atmosphere might be great. But what happens first few minutes if, you know, say a Yeti misses a great chance or even if he just, yeah. you know, a simple ball comes up to him and he can't hold it in and give it away. I just feel like it drains the whole place. Everyone's kind of on his back and to be honest it's not as if he hasn't had time to turn this around people were willing to give him the benefit of the doubt but when you're putting in performances like he is and missing sitters like he is um it's it's not going to do anyone any good 
Jackie, would you start him? Have we got any other options? It's a hard one. Um, you know, I agree with what you're saying. It, it's, I mean, if you look at a Yeti himself, what is, what is his strengths? You know, he doesn't run and bind. He doesn't work the channels that great. He doesn't hold it up that well. What we've seen and what he was, the only you would say that was his strength are is maybe instinct inside the box. He's a penalty box striker. We've seen a few times last season. Mm-hmm. But in that instance, he needs to be alongside someone who is going to take away the defenders and make things happen. You know, and, and him as a second striker. I don't see him as a, a number nine. Um, and if I, if I was lining my team up against him, like we've seen in the last few games, you know, especially the the Livingston game with the forty odd crosses, you know, like, yep, cross it in. He's he's not he's not going to win it. He's not going to. And the difference with Kyogo, Kyogo's not the biggest. He's not there, but his movement, he has that double movement to get in, go across the front, and even at the weekend there was a couple of ones that uh, Ralston put in. Uh, mm. You know, if he got right across the front of the goalkeeper, which. I would anticipate Kyogre would have done, which he'd done against Dundee. Then at least you know he would have scored that, and the, the chance that he did get from a couple of yards out that he blasts over the bar um, is clearly struggling for confidence at the moment. But I don't think he's a he's a striker to lead the line. Um, he needs, I think, he needs somebody else to do it. The problem is he don't have anybody, and that's that's the concern. Yeah, he missed that sitter. He also had a couple of really good headed chances as well. One early on from Ralston, one in the second half, which, you know, having watched the replay was, again, I think even Kyogo, who's probably shorter than a Yeti, probably not as strong in the air as a Yeti. A Kyogo still probably puts in a better effort than that. It's, it's just really, really frustrating a Yeti. And, you know, this pressing football that Ange wants to play, it comes from the, the front and Kyogo starts it so well. A Yeti just doesn't do that. And I think the whole team suffers as a result. Celtic are obviously, you know, going through a tough phase at the moment. Jackie, as I say, there was booze at full time on, on Sunday. How did Celtic get the fans back on side? When you were playing, when you were captaining and you were going through a tough period when the fans, maybe you got booed off the park. I don't know if they did that back in the early 21st century, but how did you kind of, <laughs> how did you get, um, you know, the fans back on side the next game? What do Celtic fans want to see from the team? I think first and foremost, they want to see them giving them their all. For, you know, the, the fans react to that. You know, just like you're saying there about Diogo, about his work rate and his desire mm. to, to block things and start things from the front. Yet he could do that. Uh, you know, have the fans talking about him in, the, in a good sense, not just about scoring goals, about his work rate first and foremost, his desire to help the team. Uh, and that helps the rest of the team behind them, the midfielder to get up, the, foot, the centre backs to get up, and it keeps a a kind of a team spirit, you know, it starts. It does start from the front. The fans react to that as well. But it's when they're not doing it and going through the motions, uh, the fans, you know, the fans will let them know that uh, and, and and show their, their disappointment. Which I think it, it will help the team in the long run. And I, I think it was clearly missed last year. A lot of the times, if the fans had been there, you know, that a lot of things would have been different. Um, so they would let them know. I want to see Celtic coming out on, on Thursday, as you say, Jackie, with real intent to go and press the game right from the start, play the game in Leverkusen's half, take the game to them. If Kyogo's in the team, and I, I hate to keep going on about him, I don't actually hate it, but if he's in the team playing up front, you know, you're confident that he's going to press the game and the whole team's going to go up the park, the stadium's going to be rocking. I just don't know if we've got the players who can do that at the moment. I don't know if there's an engine in, you know, a Yeti, Rogic and Turnbull playing together. You know, if it's, say, Sorrow, a defensive mid, you're worried about him getting an early booking if he's trying to, you know, press the game. But I really just want Celtic to come out with intent. If we lose the game, even if we lose, you know, 2-0, 3-1, something like that, you're up against a really good side. We know where we are at the moment. I don't think many Celtic fans are expecting us to go and win the game on Thursday. But what we want to see is some real intent from the team. And I don't honestly think that intent has been there since... Probably the St Mirren game, the Betis game, the first half, but for a full match, probably since St Mirren, uh, probably five or six weeks ago. Um, what do you want to see, Ewan? 
yeah, it's that intensity you talk about. And I think that's, I, I honestly think a, a bad plane up front is a good show and not just because I want to write an article about it later. Like, I really do think uh, he's uh, he's got that intensity that you want. And he, he's not just about taking players on, but he's also, you know, about that defending from the front. And he just seems absolutely desperate to be on the ball all the time. Um, so so I would I would go with that. But yeah, in terms of what fans want to see, it's, yeah, it's intensity, it's... Um, urgency, especially if you know we're if not maybe chasing a game, but trying to get a winner, um, which is in general is just very very slow, very plodding um, at times uh, against Dundee United, and where where I was sitting, there was a lot of fans just giving absolutely howls of derision whenever it was a sideways pass or a backward backwards pass. It was um, so yeah, it's just got to be. It's, I know I know we just talked about fitness and how we're having difficulties with fitness, but. I mean, at least for like a half, you know, you should be talking about players going to, you know, moving the ball along really quickly and, and making clever runs and, and doing all the things that, you know, we know they can do. So I think that's a frustration is we've seen them, we've seen these the same players deliver some really fantastic stuff. So I think that's where the, a lot of the disappointment lies. But then, I, I don't know, I could be way off. I mean, we played against a really good side and he's at Alkmaar and, and we beat them 2-0 at home. Um, we rode our luck in that game, but I thought we were brilliant that night. We took the game to them. We played with that intensity, but it wasn't just kind of, um, you know, a, aggression. It was controlled aggression, and it was also good football we played as well. We passed yeah. the ball really well. That's what I think we all want to see on, on Thursday, Jackie. Play in the front foot. Get the support back in your side, because the Celtic support might have booed the team off on Sunday, but we're still so behind Ange and so behind what he wants to do. This is still only September. I think Jota said that today in his press conference. And if we were to beat Leverkusen on Thursday, or even win on Sunday, it could be the perfect kind of start to our season to really get it going. Yeah, it could. And also having players coming back as well, and the squad getting strong. They said I think that's important, but it has been tough for him just now, the manager, especially with the injuries that he's got and he won't be able to do the things he wants to do with the team. You know, he's having to sort of plug gaps and stuff just now and try and get through the, the current situation until the players are back fit and obviously then he can address things in January. But uh, I totally agree with you, if he gets the fans on the side, the energy of the Altmar game, I thought they were excellent. You know, right in the front foot, everybody working, chasing the ball, uh, and I thought it was a fantastic match. You know, they were a good side. Alkmaar were a good side, and it will be the same with Thursday. They will need to hit. Everybody will need to be on their top game uh, on Thursday to you know to get something positive out of the match. Well, hopefully, lads. Hopefully, we can kickstart our season. If not on Thursday, then Sunday against uh, Aberdeen, one of your former teams, Jackie. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. That'd be. I, I think everyone's pretty much a former team of Jackie at this stage. Dundee United, oh, Aberdeen. Sure. I didn't play for United, though. I just managed them. Yeah, <laughs> but aye, that was a. Uh, I mean, they're they're going through a tough time just now as well. A bad result at the weekend, so they're they're hurting just now. Their fans have kind of, you know, uh, disgruntled, shall we say, at the results. They're losing three two away at St Mirren, which will be a tough game. Bruni Bruni uh, coming back to play against it as well. So, but you know that that's the thing. The players have to handle it. Uh, they have to step out and and, and take uh, you know take the game to them and make sure they win. Right, lads. Thanks very much. Thanks for your time. Thanks everyone for watching this video on sixty seven Hail Hail. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you've not done it yet. And we'll speak to you tomorrow. We've got a big preview to the Leverkusen game. We'll be speaking to a guy who's pretty well known, um, hopefully, to a lot of you. <laughs>